Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, interviewing entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. Each episode examines various challenges and endeavors in the words of the entrepreneur themselves to help you, the listener, learn from their experience. In this episode, testing and validation is mentioned, and that will be our highlighted topic today. Why is testing and validation important? In business, the name of the game is risk, or managing your risk specifically. What is at risk? Money. Most individuals I know do not go into a business to lose money, so it is important to determine ways to minimize our risk. One way of doing that is testing and validating a product before it goes to market. We've discussed the stages of creating a product and testing and validating is one of those stages and an important stage. Truth be told, this is where my first company, SLM Apparel, did not succeed. I took a product to market without testing or validating it, costing me time and money. A lot of money. Now, it is important to note that an idea validation cannot guarantee the success of a startup. So don't go telling everyone that Mr. Gabriel Flores said all good ideas are successful ideas. Sadly, they are not. That's why testing is important. Check that the idea has real demand. Do you think Blockbuster wishes they could have taken up the offer to purchase Netflix in 2000 for $50 million? Netflix is now worth over $50 billion. What happened to Blockbuster? Or Steve Jobs failed Next Incorporated, also known as the most successful failure ever. Jobs created a sophisticated computer, pretty similar to the one you see today, but he built it in 1989. Due to the complexity of building the computer, factories were only able to produce around 100 machines per month instead of the thousands that the factories were intended to create. Who from the public wanted to buy a $5,000 computer in 1989 that didn't connect to the internet? That's right, few. Testing and validation is important, but don't take my word for it. Take it from the consumer. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. She is a full-time fitness instructor, a full-time mother, and the owner of Handful. Please welcome Jennifer Ferguson. Jennifer, so excited to have you. Let's let's talk about your company, but first, would love to hear a little bit about you. Who is, please introduce the world to Jennifer Ferguson. Thank you so much for having me here. Appreciate this opportunity. And wow, a little bit about myself. Uh, I guess off the top of my head, I'm the youngest of four. And I grew up in Montana, where there are, I think, three times more sheep than people. (laughs) (laughs) And so I really feel fortunate that I was, I kind of look at it, I was kind of given endless opportunities because there were so few humans that basically if you had a pulse, you were welcome, invited. I played on co-ed flag football team in fifth grade. I was on the boys all-star soccer team because there weren't enough girls to make a team. I was in math contests uh, and I'm uh, not tall and I was able to play varsity basketball and volleyball. And so I really didn't grow up with labels and pronouns. And so people meet me and go, oh, I didn't know you were so short. And I'm like, what? I didn't know I was short. And so I feel fortunate uh, that I was ra- I was raised in an area and also wide open spaces. So it was kind of, you know, leave the house at 8 a.m. and don't come back till five and figure out something to do outside in between that time. And, and then, like I said, being the youngest of four, I think my siblings tell me my parents had relaxed 
<laughs> by the time I came around. And yeah, I so, know that feeling. Uh, I'm the youngest of four as well, so I know. I mean, they, uh, they, they saved the best for last. Thank you. And they also, the siblings also sure put us in our place and, and let us, let us know our place. So I think, um, best of, best of all the wor- worlds is, is how I would describe, uh, my upbringing and, and childhood. Awesome. So let's, let's talk about your company handful. How did, how did, uh, let's, let's one, let's kind of uh, give a little synopsis of what it is and then love to hear how you started it. I, I was really, uh, just once I, like I said, growing up active, I, as I started getting older, was frustrated that I was needing to sacrifice fashion for function. I had to pick and choose and just having an active lifestyle, I wanted something that would be versatile enough as I was. And I just kept needing to find different things for all of my different activities. So my, my bag just kept growing with, I needed this for this and something different for that. And, and I have been in group fitness for over 20 years and I would find if I was teaching a strength class, no one needed to know if I was hot or cold. When I taught a cycle class and I got inverted, I wanted to make sure I was being um, protected. And then if I went for a run and it started raining, just wanting to have proper fabric and support and yet have it feel and uh, look good as well. And as a fitness on instructor being on stage, everyone feels like they're on stage in life. And I think the most valuable real estate is between our ears and having that just cluttered and clogged and distracted. I wasn't able to focus on my activity at hand. And so I thought this shouldn't be rocket science to have something versatile, a versatile base layer. And, uh, after searching in vain, just decided to launch what I'd been looking for and come to find out other women wanted the fashion and the function. And, and so at Hamful, we, call it the high five, the F words we swear by, which are fashion, function, feel, fun, and fight against breast cancer because our uh, bra has a pocket with optional modesty padding that you can wear the pads, not wear the pads, stack them up because women like choices. And so the same product we all wear is an option for the one in eight women still getting diagnosed with breast cancer in the U.S. And so that's where the fight comes from with our high five of F words we swear by. That's awesome. So when you, when you originally started this idea, did you stick with the original idea or did you pivot at any time? Well, there have been a lot of pivots. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping slow and steady wins the race. We've been at this over a, a baker dozen, 13 plus years. And it definitely started out more of a hobby as my kids were growing up. And then uh, about less than a handful of years ago, decided go big or go home. We need to make this, um, a proper business. And we, at that point realized the world had finally caught up with us because that's when people were wanting the versatile active wear. And so we've added uh, multiple bra styles, which is kind of our hero, hero, and then as well as tops and bottoms. And really the premise being active wear that you can be supported from wake up to worn out and grab life by the handful. And so, yeah, we just change our shoes, change our activity. And, uh, so having something that has those, those high five of F words that are really important to us is what allows us to support women to be active in style and comfort and support. Yeah. So, so looking back, what were like the key milestones that you can clearly recognize now that set you on a path for growth? I mean, the number one milestone for me is team. We definitely believe in teamwork is what makes the dream work. And me, party of one, are a lot of gaps. (laughs) And so I am passionate about connecting with people and and sales. And uh, so I originally, we were predominantly with retailers. So I would go to trade shows and meet with, uh, retailers and travel. And then now that we're on our phones a lot, we have a combination of the direct to consumer as well as the, the B2B business. And so finding teammates that support those gaps has been huge. And, uh, in the beginning, 
when I launched my best mom friend, where we literally carpooled our young kids everywhere together, uh, she actually was going through brain surgery right when I launched Hamful. And I thought, oh, my, my wingman's going under. And uh, when she came to, she said, I want to be part of Hamful. And we're still not sure if that was the anesthesia talking <laughs> or not, but over a dozen years later, she's uh, one of my, my right-hand people uh, going strong at Hamful. And then I had a third woman who was attending um, a run group at the gym we went to. And she said, if you need anything, let me know. That's probably a deadly <laughs> phrase for a, a mass <laughs> master delegator. And so she was super capable at tons of things. So it was kind of the three of us. And then, uh, my, my running partner friend, her husband was taking a job elsewhere. So we did an exit with her at the time. And then we brought in, um, it, we all kind of stemmed from the gym, uh, Jody, she had lost her mom too early to cancer and she was a big wig at Intel and she's a accounting background. And so, uh, she was on her sabbatical and we said, Hey, would you mind coming in and hanging out with Hamful for a while? And she was looking for something she was really passionate about having lost her mom too early. And so she came in during her sabbatical and never left. We got fortunate and she's now uh, all the great experience she got at Intel, she is, is able to share at Hamful as our CFO and COO with really strong operations and finance background. And then Carrie, uh, I was introduced to her as a breast cancer survivor as we had been a bra for active women and we knew we wanted to support the fight against breast cancer being a bra company with a pocket that um, actually could be billed by insurance. And yet I knew nothing about that space. And so I was treating these hospitals like running retailers, like, can we give some samples and come to find out that's actually illegal. <laughs> so find, so getting, so someone said, Oh, you should meet Carrie. She's amazing. She's a breast cancer survivor. And so I met her at Pete's coffee and she thought we were doing a prototype of a bra. And she actually went to the same gym and had been walking by the pro shop for years, not knowing there was an option for her inside because it is a tricky marketing to, to show. Um, and, and a lot of people are private about breast cancer. And, and so, uh, I, she, she tells the story that she was just being nice and went into the bathroom to try on this product. And then she tells the story that after putting the handful bra on, she saw her, pre breast cancer self looking back at herself and that it was really life altering for her. She's double mastectomy and, and did not reconstruct. She chose health and wellness. It, everything kind of went fast. And so she has a lot of mobility having not reconstructed. So that's, what's really awesome for her. And then handful being something lightweight, they gave her shape and balance. Her doctor said, you're measuring half an inch taller. What are you doing differently? And she said, Oh, i the only thing I can think is this bra I started wearing. And uh, so it's a metaphor for all of us is having that proper equipment so you can focus on your activity at hand. And so that's really important to us as you put our products on, they feel great. You forget you're wearing them and you can just hold your head high and open your heart and focus on what's important that day. Yeah. And that's a great story and it leads perfectly into my next question. And really that's how, how did you you know, kind of help uh, or or lead your consumers and convince them to purchase your product? Interesting. It's really a uh, wear test. It's like test driving the car that people put on handful and go, oh, whoa, why is that so cute and so comfortable? And oh, and then they start moving around and it's, it's supportive, it's effective. And then, so the name comes from my dad saying she's a handful. And so it's really an attitude that we celebrate. I mean, when we, when we look at this, the data of, of our consumer, uh, the person's active, likes to travel is fairly tech savvy. So looks can find us online as well as our local retailers. And, um, and, and that's where they're also with our influencers. And so that's been an angle for us is having women that people tune into talk about our product and that leads them to find out more information and we guarantee our product. So once someone tries it on their body and experiences it, uh, that's when they typically purchase and oftentimes come back for more and 
no bra is supposed to see a birthday. So we're supposed to be replacing every year. And so that's what we're constantly just trying to find out what the consumer is looking for each year around the fashion function fun piece. We have our color names are named. One of our most popular colors is our no headlights white. (laughs) Finally, a white sports bra we can be active in, in confidence. And uh, so that's where the fun as well as our colors and prints and then the fight. So it's, it's really uh, just a joy to get to work with such a badass team. And we actually have am badassadors. Nice. <laughs> uh, and so it's just uh, a lot of really uh, strong, supportive women, uh, supporting women by women for women. Nice. That's amazing. So let's, let's kind of take it back to the beginning of the, the, the creation of handful. How did you start? Did you just start like fundraising? Did you have to do venture capital and how, how did that work? Well, originally I, I tell the story that I looked at it. Well, I looked at launching handful to two, two ways. One, I looked at it as being my third child, having my <laughs> third child and having had two children that had just entered school at the time. I knew the first year they don't survive without you. And second year you have to hope they're not falling down the stairs and hopefully by five they can put a sandwich together some people i'm following on social media their kids are cooking a lot earlier than that's pretty awesome uh but you get the idea that that it's not for the faint at heart and there's no one way to do things and from here to there is never a straight line lots of loop-de-loops and so i went in with that mindset and the second piece i also looked at it as giving myself a master's degree and ed- I thought, worst case scenario, I'm, I'm going to be giving myself an education. And best case scenario, this is something other people are looking for, and it could be a viable business. And so I took what I would invest in a master's degree and use that as my original investment in launching Handful. And then, yes, cash flow is challenging uh, for entrepreneurs, especially for a a uh, um, product company where you have to purchase in advance. And then by the time the retailer buys it and pays you, that can be six months of cash flow that you're, you're working with. And uh, so when we finally decided to go big or go home about a handful of years ago, we were uh, given an opportunity to pitch at the Ben Venture Conference, BVC. And we thought, okay, we're probably going to be up against men in suits pitching their tech companies. And so we're going to walk the talk and, and walk in as women wearing our active wear. And we all kind of showed it in a different versatile way. I think I had on uh, high heels and a blazer and, and Jody had on Chuck Taylors and uh, as our CFO, COO, and, and we both went on stage and I presented and then she was there to help answer uh, any of the balance sheet questions. And and then we walked away with one of the, the top investments. So it was really exciting. And we actually had quite a few men come up and say, Oh, now I get why that's what my daughter lives in. And so to, to even have someone who is not even your consumer grasp the importance of that, that high five of, of those F words that really help women grab life by the handful just was super rewarding that we're on the the right track. Nice. What would you say you learned from that, uh, that investment pitch? Ooh, the first thing that comes to my mind is feel the fear and, and do it anyway. I mean, it was, it was a a pretty big stage to get on and not only a big stage, but wow, in front of, you know, really intelligent investors that, that, uh, look at so many different companies. Uh, it, it was, it was such an interesting, I, it just kind of hit me as we were sitting in the, in the stands before uh, we went on and I just, I can't remember, I think I texted the team and um, I just said, I need a breather. And we, no one even like hesitated. We all just stood up, walked out and I actually got really emotional. And I think cause it just hit me like, whoa, we've come so far that we, this is what we've worked toward and, and our hard work is being recognized. And, uh, and then it was like, okay, we, I was present with, with that pretty awesomeness and then time to, you know, deliver on stage. And so it was just a really awesome combination. Uh, and then just to have such amazing investors believing in us and supporting us, uh, with their dollars and with their, their expertise, uh, just was super validating that uh, we kind like I said, kind of felt like the world is caught up with us and, and wants and needs more of this. That's amazing. Was there ever a moment, uh, 
either for you or, or for a handful of the company that you felt self doubt? <laughs> uh, every other hour on the hour <laughs> for the last dozen plus years. And, and it goes back to me as, as being a parent, you know, is that kind of metaphor that you go, what, what am I doing? Do I know what I'm doing? Could I, should I, would I be doing different things differently? And yet uh, one metaphor and one thing I've, I've found as a parent that I've found with entrepreneurship is, is you show up every day you show up and, uh, and, and people even ask like, how did you get started? And, you know, there's so many books and so many one through 10 to me, it's, it's do something every single day, do something. And, uh, there's so much to, to be done and to be accomplished that if you're in action and I've, I've worked with so many different entrepreneurs that, yes, yeah, some people are real left brain, logical, linear, and others just, uh, everything is figure outable. I read the Marie Forleo book and, and that definitely explains uh, my attitude is just roll the sleeves up, be in action. And it makes a difference. You know what I love is when our guests come on here and they always talk about all these different books they read. What What's one of your favorite books? Oh, I mean, definitely everything is figure outable. I love that book. Uh, I also, I, I love the Trevor Noah book. I love to read about people that, that uh, have had very interesting lives and, and the way they can be positive and, and, and tenacious and, and get to where they're, they're going. Uh, I read Glennon Doyle's Untamed as, as a company named Handful, who, uh, my dad definitely, when he would say she's a handful, he would typically be gently holding the back of my neck, encouraging me to be calm and quiet. And I'd run off. So I, I was asked a question about fear and I said, you know, I, I, my one, well, I'm fearful about a lot of things and yet, uh, claustrophobic. And I started thinking it's probably a metaphor, like I caging me in starts making me feel claustrophobic. So definitely having the option to, uh, grab life by the handful is, is important and empowering. And I love that we can, people say, Oh, handfuls made that a positive word. And I was like, it. hasn't it always been a positive word? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. My kid's a handful. <laughs> She's positive, right? <laughs> Good. I like it. So what, what advice would you give to, you know, you, the younger generation, maybe, you know, a female or male or other trying to start a small business, what advice would you give them? I mean, the present time, what jumps to my brain is never let a good crisis go to waste. And I think Churchill might've been the first one saying that in a war. And yet there've been so many uh, unknowns the past, especially couple of years. Uh, but we had a, an investor mention that to us, never let a good crisis go to waste. And whoo, we've sure used that phrase a lot. Our most recent shipment was delayed a lot. And that was stressful on Q1 sales goals, et cetera, et cetera. So we're always, okay, never let a good crisis go to waste. What can we get out of this? You and I were talking in advance, some, some silver linings in the pandemic that we've learned. And, and that's definitely uh, what I'm trying to look at in times of, of crisis is, is how can we find that silver lining and the learning in that? So that would be something I would tell my younger self. I also, at the same time, would like to tell myself now to be reminded by my younger self. I love when, when you look back and little kids are like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they're like, I want to be a fire truck or a T-Rex. And you're like, right on. And then somewhere <laughs> along the way, someone's like, you can't be a fire truck and you can't be a T-Rex. And the amount of times people have told us we can't do X, Y, Z, if we would have let that stop our dreams, we wouldn't, wouldn't be here today. And so I think it's important for our older self to be reminded of the younger and, and vice versa. Man, that's, that's very well said. Now, how, how can the listeners at home get in contact with handful? How can they purchase the product? Handful.com is, is the best place to go. We have a dealer uh, locator on there. So it shows our, our retailers around the country so you can shop local and also handful.com is a great way to get information about products uh, and, and what you might be looking for. We're true to shirt size. So extra small through extra large, we're adding additional sizes in the future. Uh, if whatever size shirt you typically wear is most likely. And so that's a pretty easy entry because once again, some people are, uh, do a lot of measurements, but we find that shocker women know what size they are. And, and we've even found this in kind of the sneaker world. They be, you know, a woman gets fitted for, you know, this like super clinical way for her sneakers. And she's like, uh, 
I'm not that size and I'm also not buying that color. <laughs> and so we, we uh, let the, the woman decide what size she typically wears and, and that's what she's most likely going to feel comfortable wearing. And then, you know, pick a color, get dressed happy grab life by the handful. So handful.com is, is the first spot. And of course we have social media. So handful Instagram, and, and that's actually a part of the story. It took us a while to get both of those handles. So, uh, we were actually handful ink in the beginning and we, it took us a while to buy handful was actually like a grunge band out of Austin, Texas that, hadn't been using their URL for quite a while. And it, I think it took us a handful of years till they let us, um, they would relinquish that for us to pay them for that. And same thing with, with the Instagram account. So all the, the different angles that go into having people hopefully find you easily, uh, is usually not as easy as we might think. Got another question for you. Okay. What advice would you give a younger Jennifer? Yeah. So that's what I think. I, I, I think it would just be the same thing around the, uh, well, a never let a good crisis go to waste. I just, I think, I think a, a thing to let, I have young adult children and I think people think they're supposed to have it figured out. And the older I get, the more I realize we're not supposed to maybe ever have it figured out. And, and I hope to always be learning. Uh, and, uh, one of my friends mentioned we have two ears and one mouth, which love those of you leading podcasts and, and, and sharing people's stories. Thank you. Is, uh, you know, just take things in, listen, uh, also feel the fear and do it anyway. And you probably have it more figured out than, than, you know, I, I, I remember launching handful and it's kind of like, there's no crying in baseball. I'd be like, there's no crying in business. And I was like, yes, there is. There's a lot of crying in business. There's a lot of and crying. I think when I was younger, I would, I would just really, uh, kind of repress that. And now I, I think I was sharing off offline with you earlier that when we did pitch to the Ben venture conference, we had an investor, we went to lunch just with a friend he didn't, and he, he didn't invest in handful, but he does professionally invest. And he was, uh, remembering when Carrie had breast cancer and that his wife would bring meals to her family. And Carrie said, Oh, my, my neighborhood was preparing for me to not poss possibly be around with my kids. And, and so then he had water escaping from his eyes and he said, Oh, I'm a leaker. And I said, Oh, I'm going to adopt that because I'm definitely a leaker. And yeah. I, it's usually when I least expect it. Uh, and I kind of got that from my dad. It's oftentimes when I'm happy is, is when I will, you know, be a leaker and expressing just joy and gratitude. And, and so that's t the younger generation is, is there is no one way, there's no right way. You actually have it figured out probably more than you think and, and just trust yourself and roll your sleeves up and, uh, you know, find your passion, build your team and high five. Nice. Last question. Would you do it all again? Oh, a hundred percent. I, I've, I've always felt, you know, if this was my last day, I'm so grateful. And yeah, to me, like I said, the team, uh, one team, one dream that I've, I've had the joy of working with and, and, and it just continues to grow the, the more amazing people I get to work with and, and being here meeting you today. And, uh, it's just such a, a pleasure. The entrepreneurial spirit and support is definitely part of my, my DNA. And I'm very grateful. Jennifer Ferguson, the founder and CEO of Handful. Thank you so much for joining me on the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For those at home, thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit the Shades of E.